Hello everyone, welcome to the unboxing and setup of the Xbox Series S. My name is The Coder and today we're going to be setting up this brand new console. Open up the box by slicing down the three sides on the sticky tape which keeps the box held together. Turning the box back around and lifting the top we're presented straight away with the very small Xbox Series S. So underneath the console we've got some information which tells us how to install batteries in the included controller and some general safety information. Inside the accessories compartment we're presented with the controller a power cable and a HDMI cable. We also have a booklet which contains warranty information in various different languages so no matter where you are in the world you should be able to understand the warranty information. Putting that to one side we can take out the HDMI cable. It's a fairly decent quality HDMI 2.1 cable much better quality than the predecessor which was on the original Xbox One series and we also have a figure of eight standard power cable this version is the UK plug yours may look a little bit different depending where in the world you live removing the controller from the box and removing the packaging We're presented with two Duracell batteries, always nice to see those included in the console. And we also have the Xbox Series S white controller. You may want to keep the packaging in the box and put the box in a safe place with all of the other included leaflets just in case you do ever need to send it back under warranty or in case you wish to sell it at a later date. To get set up we need to open up the packaging around the HDMI cable and once we've unraveled the cable we can go ahead and plug one side of the cable into the HDMI port on the back of the Xbox. I always recommend plugging it into the Xbox side first. Next we can go ahead and plug in the power cable. So we'll start by unraveling that. And then plug it in to the wall socket. Next plug the other end into the console itself. and we're ready to turn on the console. So we press the button on the front and now we're presented with the setup screen where we can go ahead and set up the console itself. Before we do that we need to take the included controller and we need to remove the batteries from the packaging. You can use your own batteries or you can use a battery pack as well but for now we're going to use the included Duracell batteries. So I'll start by taking off the back cover. So next we're going to insert the Duracell batteries into the controller with the negative side on the right hand side of the battery terminal for the bottom battery and on the left hand side for the top. Then we'll proceed to put the back back onto the controller and we'll turn the controller on. And as you will see, the controller should already be synced up to the console because that's how they come from factory. It's quite a nice touch. If your controller for some reason isn't synced up, we can always press the sync button on the top of the controller by pressing and holding until the light starts to flash on the controller itself. Next we'll look on the front panel and we'll press the sync button 
on the console itself and the light should flash. And after a few seconds the controller will sync up with the console. You can also use a third party controller. This controller is the controller I use for testing and it's my original 1708 model controller that I had with my Xbox One S. It's been heavily modified and it's a bit beaten but we can use older controllers on these consoles as well. So as you can see it's not synced up so we press the sync button and then press the sync button on the console. So taking a look on the app we can see that this will work and we can use this controller but for now we're going to be using the included controller so I'm going to remove these batteries and I'm going to put them back into the original controller. Put the batteries all back on and turn the controller on. And as you can see, the controller is still synchronized up. We can use multiple controllers on this console. So next we're going to select our region and language. And then we're going to connect to a network. You can use an Ethernet connection if you like, just by popping a Ethernet cable into the back of the console and connecting the other end to your modem. But for now, we're going to use Wi-Fi and I'm going to connect to the workshop router. Once we're done, we click start to continue. That's the button with the three lines on the controller and it says everything is good, so we can press continue. Next we select where we live. And then we're going to run an update. This update is 794 meg. It may differ depending on when you're starting the update and when you're setting up the console. When you're ready, just press start update. And now the update will proceed to download, verify that it's the correct update, and then it will install the update for you. Once the update is complete, you may notice that the screen has dimmed depending on how long you were away for. So if it does, just press the X button on the controller and then press A and it will continue the setup. Next we're going to need to update the controller. This may take a few minutes also, but it makes sure that we've got the latest firmware on the controller as well. Once the update gets to 100% we can click on next and next we need to sign in with our Microsoft account. If we don't have a Microsoft account we can create a new one on the next page. So press A to continue. And then we can either enter our current Microsoft address or we can click get a new email. We can also select use another device and that will allow us to use another device to confirm the sign-in. So enter your account email click on the enter arrow and then we need to enter the account password and then we're going to click on next on the data privacy information and I always opt out of helping make the Xbox experience better it reduces the amount of things that we share with Microsoft and its developers select next on the when we share data with publishers option you can also click on tell me more and that will give you some more information on what kind of data is shared
if you need to apply settings from a previous console you can go up and select the console that you want to apply the settings from that will transfer all of your preferences such as your desktop wallpaper and your user preferences for now we're just going to click on no thanks if you want to lock down the console to prevent people from logging in you can set a passcode but I always select no barriers because I'm the only person who has access to my console. You can also select to assign the controller that you're using to automatically sign you in when you turn on the console with that controller. Microsoft may offer you a deal on Game Pass Ultimate. If you don't want it or if you've already had it, you can click on No Thanks or you can select other plans or use a code if you have one. Next select your time zone, in this case it is London, so we click on next. And I'm going to set it to energy saving because I don't want the console to stay on 24 hours a day. Allow to keep the apps and games up to date automatically and then click on continue to find the best settings for your television or display as you can see it found 4k on this one and then we're ready to go to the dashboard so click on take me home and that is pretty much it and that's going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching if you want to see more tutorials for the Xbox Series S or if you want to see repair videos where I repair these pretty much every day, not these consoles specifically yet but maybe in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.